Good morning, church. So good to see you. Let's all stand together. Father, we invite you in this place. Come move in our midst. Heal our hearts. Let us see you and worship you in spirit and in truth. Let's all sing this together. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Amen. We're going to sing that part again. In the name. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We're gathered together to lift up your name call on our Savior to fall on your grace to hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down as your people sing we will rise with you lifted on your wings and the world will see that our God saved In the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, fall on your grace, and to hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing. We will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will see that. Let's sing it out. Our God saves. Our God saves. There is hope in your name. salvation let's take a look at the screens real quick
morning, church. Man, it's always good when we can start our service with baptism. Amen? First, we have for you Ellie Kennedy. Ellie is the daughter of Jeff and Natalie Kennedy, and she made her decision at kids camp. Ellie, I want to ask you, who is your Lord? On the basis of your public profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in a new life. Amen. Amen. Next, we have Mason Thompson. Mason came and was part of our men's retreat. new baptism seat. All right. Mason, I want to ask you, who is your Lord? Jesus Christ. On the basis of your public profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in the new life. Amen. What a joy to see. Let's stand together, and we want to continue this celebration. It's really what, to, what today and every Sunday is about, to celebrate what God has done and to thank Him. So let's sing this chorus together. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He has done. Praise the Lord. 
lavished on us. His blood was the payment, his life was the cause. We stood neath the dead we could never afford. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is
but what he truly thinks of us, that we are his child. We're not a mistake. We're not just wandering aimlessly. He's got a plan and a purpose for us. <clears throat> that he is our father. God, help us to see what you have for us and who you've called us to be. Let's sing this again together. Sing it and believe it. I am chosen. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God, we know that you're here with us and that you, you command us to meet together and promise that you meet with us when we come in your name. And God, you've given us a freedom that we can't explain, that we don't deserve, that we are your child. We're no longer a slave to the sins of this world, but we are free to live for you. Maybe there's somebody today that hasn't ever experienced that freedom let today be the day that someone would be set free in your name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
How's everybody doing this morning? Great. Man, I, let's give a hand to Michael Roach and Scott Till in the back for what they do. Man, the unsung heroes. I told Scott, I went up to do the baptistry. My mic has been giving us some problems, and, and I said, let's try it again. I think it might have been my connection, but we'll know after baptism. And I came down after baptism. I'm a big boy, so you put me in hot water, what happens? I begin to boil. And... Uh, I came down and, I mean, we're on the last song, Neil. Thank you, Neil, for seeing that I wasn't in here and saying, okay, let's sing a little more. And, uh, but man, I, I just appreciate everybody that's working uh, to try to pull this stuff off. Amen? God is good. Man, what a great time of worship this morning. So excited uh, for all the baptisms today. We'll have six more in the second service that we'll be celebrating together. And God is just doing great things. Amen? Amen. It's awesome. 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 You're in the right place because the Lord is just visiting us, and, and uh, we want to stay humble and stay hungry for Him and His presence. Amen. It's a great blessing. Well, have you ever watched uh, Crabs in a Bucket? There is actually a mentality that, that people talk about. It's called the Crabs in a Bucket mentality. So if you've ever watched crabs in a bucket, there's a smart crab that finds his way up above the other crabs and climbs up on the ledge only to have one of the other crabs pinch him and draw him back down into the group. It's called the crabs in a bucket mentality. And uh, Omar Otani writes that the crab mentality, and by the way, all of us have it to some level. The crab mentality says, if I can't have it, neither can you. If I can't have it, neither can you. And he adds, here's what uh, you and I need to realize. Sometimes we're the victims of the crab effect, and sometimes we're the instigators of it. Sometimes we're the, the people who get pulled down back into the bucket by other people, and, and sometimes we're the people doing the pulling. So it's important for all of us to, to realize that if we're not careful, we become that crab. Now, how many of you know crabby people? Yeah, don't, don't look at the person next to you. Yeah, um, sometimes you're the one being tooled, pulled down, and sometimes you're the one doing the pulling. Today we're finishing up this series in Summer Baggage, and I don't know about you, but it has been a, it's been a good series for me. It was four things that really the Lord's working on in my life, and uh, this one's just as big, and I think it hits all of us, so I hope you're ready and taking notes today. Uh, today we're going to work on unpacking jealousy, unpacking jealousy. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Genesis chapter 37, Genesis 37. And stand with me if you're physically able, and let's read this passage together. I, I brought this passage to your attention a few weeks ago when we began this uh, time together. But the richness of God's Word is you can look at it from different angles and find different truths. So today we're going to look at it from an angle I haven't looked at before with you. And uh, hopefully it will be a blessing to you. Let's look at chapter 37 beginning in verse 3. It says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his sons because he was the son of his old age and he made him a robe of many colors but when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers they hated him and could not speak peacefully to him now Joseph had a dream and when he told his brothers they hated him even more he said to them hear this dream that I have dreamed Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and, and behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright, and behold, your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. Now, I'm going to stop right there and say, if, if your little brother said that to you at a family reunion, come on now. His brother said to him, are you indeed to reign over us, and are you indeed to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Behold, I've dreamed another dream. Behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars were bowing down to me. But when he told it to his father and to his brothers, his father rebuked him. 
And said to him, what is this dream you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers indeed come to bow ourselves on the ground before you? And his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the saying in mind. Let's pray together. Father, today I pray through the reading of your word, through the study of it, that your Holy Spirit will speak to all of us. Because we're all touched by jealousy. Lord, I pray right now that you'll just bring everything to life in our, in our lives that needs to be unpacked. That we just need to stop carrying around in our life. Set us free, we pray today, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. Well, the bottom line today, and I need you to get this, I wanted to make it as simple as I could. You matter too. I want you to get today that you matter too. You see, a lot of times when we look at jealousy, the big issue is the question we ask ourselves, do I matter to anybody? Does what I do matter to anyone? What I have done in the past, has it mattered to anyone? Can I get an amen and oh me? I mean, that's really the deal. So, so when I was trying to look at what is the bottom line that you and I need to unpack jealousy out of our lives, it really came down to those three words. You matter too. It's not that the person that you're jealous of doesn't matter. It's that we need to understand we matter as well. So there's two things I want you to see today if you're taking notes. The first one is this. Don't let favoritism fool you. Don't let favoritism fool you. Now, we, we start right in this passage where uh, you've got Israel who has all of these sons. But he, the youngest boy, who in here is the baby of the family? Oh, yeah, we already knew. Um, it's kind of like people say, you're an only child, Brother Aaron. I'm like, how did you know? Oh, you can just tell, you know. <laughs> so when, uh, when our kids get together, which is usually on Sundays, I love it, but I love how they keep record of how they remember our parenting towards them. Anybody feel me? Oh, and uh, well, you would have never let me, well, actually, we did let you do that. You just remember your life so much harder than it was. So for the longest time, Andrew, we called him Boosie, and I still call him Boosie if he's in a crowd because he, he's the only one that'll know. He'll know his daddy's calling him that, and nobody else knows because he was the caboose. And, I, and we were done at four, you know, but when your wife rolls over uh, in the middle of the night and she says, I don't believe we're done. He was about to go to kindergarten. For, for me, it doesn't take much motivation to say, well, okay, let's try again. And here came Aubrey. But we were only trying for a month to have a baby. And uh, the thing about it, uh, for those of you that don't know how this works, I, I just look at Sharon deep in her eyes and she would get pregnant. So now I don't even look at her in the eye anymore. You know, that's just how it works. I didn't know if you knew that, but that's, that's well, at least that's how it worked for us. And um, I just thought, my goodness. Um, she says, why, don't, why, are you, why are you not paying attention to me? I said, oh, I am. I hear you. <laughs> I'm not going to look, right? Well, Jacob loved Joseph more. Now, the Bible says that. And if you have your Bible open and you have a pen, you, you need to underline that. J he loved Joseph Moore, there was favoritism in this home. And the text says it's because he was born to him in his old age. But if you know all the history, you also know that he was, he was born to Rachel. And Rachel was his true love. And Rachel had just Joseph and, and Benjamin. But I want to do a little twist on this. He had 11 brothers, and these 11 brothers couldn't stand him because his dad showed the favoritism by, by giving him a coat of many colors, really singling him out. He's the one that got to stay home. Some of y'all know what that's like. Some of you had the hard jobs outside in the sun. The other ones, they, they got to kind of clean the kitchen and the air conditioning and things like that. You always wondered how you got the sweat and they got the sweet and all that. That's what's happening in this home. Favoritism. But here's what I want you to understand that, that these brothers didn't understand. In the midst of God promoting, and God was going to promote 
Joseph. And he was giving him a vision of what his future would be. But in the midst of that, I, I want you to also think about this angle that the guys didn't know about themselves. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph's sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, was two half-tribes, Benjamin, Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher, all still made up the 12 different tribes of Judah and Israel. So here's guys that are struggling with jealousy towards the favorite son, and they don't even know that in the midst of their jealousy, God had a plan for them too. They had their own tribe. They were going to be promoted to their own land. They were going to have the promised land of God given to them just as much as Joseph's sons would. But they missed it because they were too drawn in by what was happening in Joseph's life and, and, and by the, the favoritism and the jealousy in their hearts. A.W. Tozier said, When the Lord lays his hand upon a man, that man ceases at once to be ordinary. He immediately becomes extraordinary, and his life takes on cosmic significance. I would say to you, if you're here and you're a born-again Christian, you have the Holy Spirit of God living on the inside of you. At the moment that you turned from your sin and you trusted Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit of God came to live inside of you, you went from ordinary to extraordinary. And he goes on and he says, The angels in heaven take notice of him and go forth to become his ministers. Though the man had before been only one of a faceless multitude, a mere cipher in the universe, an invisible dust grain blown across endless wastes, wastes, now he gets a face and a name and a place in the scheme of meaningful things. Christ knows his own sheep by name. There are no unknown Christians, no insignificant sons or daughters of God. Each one sign signifies, each is a sign drawing the attention of the tri triune God day and night upon him. The faceless man has a face. The nameless man, a name. When Jesus picks him out of the multitude and calls him to himself. I wonder, have you been fooled? by favoritism have you been fooled by favoritism have you ever felt as Tozer would say faceless or nameless well if you don't want to be honest and have church today I'm going to tell you I have I have felt that before I know what it feels like and I believe many in this room knows what it feels like to be fooled by favoritism, to, to have our eyes on what is happening in somebody else's life to the expense of even realizing what God is doing in our own lives. We're too concerned about what's happening with everyone else and missing what all God is doing in us. Amen? Philippians 2, 3, and 4 says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. But in humility count others, and I, I put some significance to this in my Bible, more significant. So if, you, if you're turned into that in your Bible, I, I want you to underline more significant. Even though you are significant, you make the choice to treat others, count others as more significant than yourselves. Let each of you not look only to his own interests, but also to the interests of of others. You see, my friend, for you and me to become everything that God wants us to be, we have to, we have to understand that we're being fooled by favoritism. Because God loves you as much as he loves the person sitting next to you. God has a plan for you as much as he does anybody else in this room or anybody else that you know that you're jealous of. And a lot of times we miss God's best for our lives because we're so concerned about what God's doing in somebody else's life. And a lot of times we'll, we'll say, God, I want you to do something big in me. I want you to grow me. I want you to, you know, to show me yourself. And then we go through difficult, hard valleys. And then we get mad at God 
because we, we misunderstand what it takes to really, to really be able to handle the blessings of God. It takes humility. And on the level of our conceit, the level of our ambition, God has to get us to a place where we're surrendered to him. So don't let favoritism fool you. The second thing I want you to see is don't find your value in validation. Don't find your value in validation. Y'all ready to keep going? All right, let's keep going. We're looking in this uh, text in verses 5 through 11. In verses 5 through 11, Joseph had a dream, and then he had another dream. The first dream, (laughs) man, we already stopped and talked about that. His brothers were already mad enough at him in the first dream. But then he has another dream that talks about the sun and the moon, which represents his parents. And he's like, oh, by the way, I had another dream. And let me clarify for you. It's not just you 11 brothers that are going to bow to me, but also mom and dad, you too. Now, we talked about a few weeks ago that Joseph's 17 years old, right? And how many of us, uh, parents and grandparents, have had a 17-year-old in our home? Raise your hand. And how many of you have had them say something that you you look at your spouse and you say, that's not my son or that's not my daughter, that's your your son, that's your daughter, right? Yeah, I, I didn't have anything to do with that. That was you, right? We've all done that. We've all done that. Until we get quiet in our spirit and we're praying for our kids and our God reminds us things we didn't know. We couldn't remember because it's been a long time since I was 17 years old. And then God will just bring into my mind Marshall, Texas, 1990. What was Aaron Dickinson doing? And I go, okay, Lord, I get it. I get it. Now, I, I want to say to you, the first impacted his brother, the second impacted his parents, but... Maybe he would have been better off keeping it to himself. Or could God know Joseph well, so well, that he knew that he would share his dream? Well, sure. And set in motion the crucible of discipleship. How many of us, doing what we, what we really believe is right, have landed in places we never thought we would be? Oh, now we're having church. And, and when we go through those difficult times, when we, we say, I, I did, Lord, what you, what, I did my best. I did what I thought you wanted me to do, but it's landed me in this place. I call it the crucible of discipleship. You see, none of us can ever go further with God until we've crucified a little bit more of ourself. The crucifixion of self leads to God being able to use us more because anytime he blesses us, there's a great risk that we'll believe that our blessings are because of us and because of our intuition and our education and our background and our hard work. And really, God wants to take us on a journey to realize every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. So we think about our lives in in light of self-promotion I think it's always been an issue but I think we see it more today I mean take a little time on Facebook take a little time on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and around the clock whatever app you have and you're going to see that many people are crying out as nameless faceless people saying does anybody see me In fact, even the best of us will look back to see if anybody liked what we posted. Does anybody care? It's not about how many likes we get once you get to my age. If it is, you need to call the office and schedule an appointment with me, and we'll we'll pray through that. But it really is about does anybody care? Does anybody care? But what we've got to be real careful of, all of us in this room, is getting trapped into this this need to be validated and finding our value from people instead of from God. Because I'm going to tell you, people will turn on you that quick. Even the best people will. And I was talking to Sharon about this this week. I said, you know, the devil uses all kinds of people. I said, you think about this. Peter was one of the favorite disciples, but didn't Jesus at one time tell him, get behind me, Satan? Because the devil can use anybody. So it's not that we don't trust people 
or try to build trust in people. We don't want to be that kind of person. But what we want to be is we want to be so settled and balanced in life that whether good or bad happens, whether disappointment happens or it doesn't, I'm, I'm true enough to myself to know that I'm a sinner saved by grace. So when somebody sins against me, I go, hey, they're just a sinner saved by grace too. And, and for a lot of them, it's not personal. It really was not. It really wasn't. It's just our flesh. We're just struggling with those things, especially when we're talking about Christians here. But, but I want to be level enough to understand that no matter what happens to me, God is for me. And God is for you. And God wants us to become like his son, Jesus Christ. And God has a plan. God has grace. God has mercy. And so should we. God forgives us. And he says, so should we. So, so we want a balance in our lives. But, you know, some people like this old commercial uh, with Stanley Johnson. Some people just don't get it. Take a look. I'm Stanley Johnson. I've got a great family. I've got a four-bedroom house in a great community. Like my car? It's new. I even belong to the local golf club. How do I do it? I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. I can barely pay my finance charges. Somebody help me. Need a smart way to consolidate your debt? At LennyTree.com, banks compete, and you choose the loan that's right for you. All right, somebody... Somebody help me. I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. But, you know, that's what jealousy causes. If, if you and I answer our jealousy by the world's standards, we're going to need lending tree all day long. And it's never going to be enough. But if we answer jealousy by God's standards, we're going to, we're going to learn how to celebrate other people's uh, successes while also knowing that God has a plan and purpose for our lives. So I want to ask you, where do you find value? Where do you find your value? Now, I really want you to think about that. Because it's important that even though you might want to say one thing, what is your life showing where you find value? Are you trying to put on a show for somebody to show that you're more significant or more successful than the rest of the people around you? We're, we can all be trapped by that. Because that's exactly what the world tells us is right. But it's the exact opposite of what God says. Some of the greatest people God used are people that, that nobody in the world would have ever given the time of day. Look at, these, look at his 12 disciples, the people he drew in closest to him. Now, they were from all walks of life, but they were from all walks of life. He didn't choose to come kingly. He came lowly. So that we would all understand that before God, we're all on the same level with him. And that's hard for us because we live in a society that tells us, no, we're not. We're classified by a certain class or by a certain color or by a certain background. And nothing could be more further from the truth if you're looking at your life biblically. In fact, in Psalms 139, 13 through 16, it says, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. This is why we're pro-life, by the way. This passage right here is why we're pro-life. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them. The days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. Some of you need to know that there's been a book written about you in heaven. How about that? And some of you are already thinking, well, what, is it a bestseller? <laughs> <laughs> You're who this sermon's for today. I'm glad you came. Listen, I want you to look at uh, someone around you and say, you matter too. You matter too. Don't let favoritism fool you. Don't find your value in validation because you matter too. In John 1, 11 and 12, it says, He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, he gave the right to become children of God. Now, I want you to keep that on the screen there, Michael. 
because I really want this to, to sink down into your heart. If anybody could have shown jealousy while he was on the earth, it'd be Jesus. If anybody could have asserted his authority, hello? Do you know who you're talking to? But he didn't. He said he came to his own and his own people did not receive him. You see, this is why I love being a Christian. I serve a Lord. You know, you had two people this morning who started this service by saying Jesus is Lord of their life. Many of you have made that confession. And you make it, I hope, not just one time. You make it every day. Jesus is Lord. I am not. And, and, and when, when we do that, we celebrate that. But I want you to understand, I serve a Jesus that understands what it feels like to be rejected. By his own people. Hello? I, I serve a Jesus that never sinned, but yet died a sinner's death on the cross for me. Hello? I, I serve a Jesus who got it all right, and I get it all wrong, but he still says, I forgive you. In fact, if you're here and you're not a Christian, I don't know what else I can tell you about how good Jesus is. I don't even know what's holding you up. Because he has done everything he could do to lift you up by putting himself lower. And then he calls us as Christians to do the same for others. Because that's what draws people in. They're like, you know, you don't have any reason to treat me nice. You don't have any reason to forgive me. You don't have any reason to offer me grace. You don't have any reason not to judge me. Yet we don't because we have the Spirit of Christ on the inside of us. He says to all who did receive him, he gave the right to become children of God. So if you're sitting here today and you walked in and you're jealous of somebody else, but you're a Christian, do you understand you're a son, you're a daughter of the God of the universe? What is our problem? I mean, if, if that's all God did for me is give me Jesus, that should be enough. Amen? Amen. But it's not because I'm an American, and I deserve more. Jesus did not become jealous when his own people rejected him. He found his value in his mission, and many received him. You see, if he would have gotten jealous and just said, I wish y'all would listen to me. I came for you, and I don't understand why. You're just living life like everything's okay. Why isn't everybody listening to me? If he focused on everybody else, he would have missed his mission, and, and, and we would have missed heaven. But no, he knew exactly why he came. He knew exactly why he existed. And you and I are too. We're supposed to know that we, we exist for God's glory. We exist for his purposes. We exist to share his gospel. We exist to live others out of sin to a Savior who loves us unconditionally. You see, I'm one of those people, as are many in this room, that, that because Jesus stayed focused on what God had for him to do, just like those 11 brothers should have done, Hey, I'm not going to worry about, yes, my brother is the favorite son. Okay, but I'm still a tribe of Judah. I'm still the leader of my people. I still have a family that looks to me. And they don't need me looking somewhere else. They need me looking at what's happening around me and, and seeing the value in leading that because that could go for generations to generations to generations. What about you? Have you received what Jesus did as your Savior? You see, in your sin and total disregard for the things of God, Jesus didn't wait for you to figure it out. He died on the cross to make a way. And he didn't stay there. He was buried, but he rose again the third day so that he could tell you that you can resurrect out. Man, that's what I love about baptism. We were sharing that with Ellie and Mason this morning. Man, what I love is imagery in my faith. I love the fact that in the Old Testament, God would always tell them, make a, make a monument right here. It wasn't so that we would get stuck there. It's so that we would remember what God has done, his faithfulness. Put a, put a marker down that says, on this day, at this time, this is what God did, and I'm not going back a different direction. 
Man, I'm, I'm a changed person because of what Christ has done in me. What about you? Have you received him as your Savior? Have you confessed him as your Lord? I want to ask you, what's stopping you? What's stopping you? Because you matter too. Father, today, I pray all across this room that, Lord, your spirit would speak to us and would help us to just hear your voice. God, many times we look at others and we see what all they have and what all seems to be going. We don't know what's really going on in their lives. A lot of people are faking it till they make it. And regardless of that, Lord, we, we need to get our eyes off of people and get our eyes on you. And see the blessings of the life that you've given us. See what's all around us that is good. See the opportunities that you have given us to become everything that you want us to be. You see, when Joseph was 17, his 11 brothers wanted him dead. But years later, they were thankful to God that he was alive. Because you chose him. And he went through a crucible of humility. A lot happened in his life to get him to the place where that vision, that dream became reality. And when it did, what a sweet day it was. God, some of the people we're jealous of, we really just need in our lives. We need to embrace how you're, how you're blessing them because those blessings also can be blessings for us. If we have the right heart. So, Lord, I pray first for Christians all across this room because it takes a Christian with the Holy Spirit to be able to unpack jealousy. So, Lord, I pray for all of us in this invitation. Lord, would you help us to unpack that baggage out of our lives, being jealous of that friend, that coworker, being jealous of that family member. But, God, I also pray for my friends that, that to this point have not received Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. What are you waiting on, friend? He loves you. You matter to him. You mattered before you were even born. So that's, that's good news. It's not based on your performance. He already loved you. But our sin is constant rejection of his love. So why don't you come to him today? Let him change you, save you. And do a work in you that you can never do by yourself. Father, show us the way in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand with me? As the Spirit leads you, this altar is open for you. If you've got a prayer need, you can come to the altar. We have ministers here to pray with you. If you need to be saved today, you know that God is calling you. You need to come. Take one of these ministers by the hand and say, I need Jesus. That's all you need to say. They'll help you. They'll pray with you. They'll celebrate with you what God is doing in your life. Maybe you're here and you're dealing. You're bound up with jealousy and you just need some help. And grab a friend in here. Go pray. Or, or come to one of these ministers and say, would you just pray over me? This is something that's big for me, what, what the Lord is showing me. And I, I don't want to leave here the same. This is your time to respond to what God is telling you. You come.
sing that chorus again. I surrender. Just a few quick announcements. Deacons, you got a deacons meeting today at, at four, so don't forget about that. If you helped with the Bingham funeral and you have and you help with dishes or help provide a meal for them, there's dishes over in the fellowship hall. So if you help with that, please make sure you pick those up. Cross camp meeting is uh, today at 5:30. That's a mandatory meeting, so don't forget about that. 5:30 today in the fellowship hall. Next Sunday is the 4th of July on Sunday, which is a, which is wonderful. But we're going to just do one service. Uh, we have people that come to the early worship, like yourselves, people that come to the late service. And you don't get to see each other. Guess what? Next Sunday, you get a chance to worship together. Just one service next Sunday uh, at 10 o'clock. No connect groups, okay? Um, also, singles, there's a special evening with Chris with Taco. Chris is the person that came in. Some of y'all met her. She helped with our greeter ministry. Chris is coming in. She does singles ministry, and we have a special evening with her, and that's going to be this Wednesday night at 6 p.m. It's going to be over at a building across the street from Lake Shore called the Cab Building. So um, singles, join us for that. It's $10. We're going to have a great meal from Dankin Barbecue, a great evening together. So if you're single, you're welcome to come join us for that. We've been having a great crowd, and our singles coming on, on Sundays for life group um, this is another event Chris will be speaking at the singles retreat so anyway make note of that um, I think that's everything guests if you're visiting with us I see a lot of new faces today so glad that you came I hope you had a great experience worshiping with us today if you would do us a favor fill out the connect card it's it's in the bulletin just complete that it tears off it's a perforated section if you would complete that give that to us we have a gift for you we'd love to meet you if you're a first-time guest or, or if you have questions we'd love to meet you over in this area right out through here and I think that's everything um, church members if you have a prayer request fill out a connect card too and we'll be praying for you first thing Monday morning glad you're here good to be in God's house today amen hey let's pray together and we'll be dismissed I want to invite you to connect group so if, don't leave if you think this is all there is there's connect opportunity which is small groups come find come find us and we'll give you information about that too let's pray Lord thank you for your blessings thank you for your word Thank you, Lord, that you love us, that we are special to you. We're a part of your family. What an amazing thing to be able to see baptisms this morning and then even in the next service to see lives changed. That's what it's all about. I pray that we would all draw closer to you today. In Jesus' name, amen.